Hello, I'm Mark Fournier, creator of Self-Help Me, Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. And welcome to the Self-Help Me Super Simplified Audio Support System. If you haven't yet read Self-Help Me, the book, I highly recommend that you do so right away. Both the book and this audio program work much better in conjunction with one another. Plus, there's far more in the book than I can include in this super simplified audio program. Hopefully you have read the book and already believe that if you want consistent results you must create habits around the subject you've chosen to master. The purpose of this audio program is simply to help you master and apply the lessons in self-help me to your life and goals. As you listen you'll quickly learn that each section builds upon the other You'll also want to listen repeatedly until you begin to master the material. As you progress, you'll be able to stop listening to part one and then part two and then part three in succession until you are down to only part four, which you can listen to in under one minute each day until you've mastered it. By the time you complete part four, you'll understand why we call this the super simplified audio support system. Part one the habit factory creating the habit of creating habits how to master mastery if you've read the book by now which I highly recommend you do I'd like to reassure you that the purpose of this audio program isn't to teach you more it's to teach you better as I point out in the book we're already inundated with too much information so the last thing you need is more of that but rarely does the information we get sink in enough to change our life. As a result, I'm going to simplify the entire book, Self-Help Me, down to less than an hour of information, so you can get right to the meat of the material and listen until it sticks. And each section of this audio program condenses the book further still until you get the bulk of it in under one minute by part four. One of the best ways of mastering something is through spaced repetition. Another way is through the stimulation of multiple senses. We achieve this in part one by putting the summary from Self Help Me, the book, on audio so you can not only see it in the book but also hear it here. And if you're an oral learner, an auditory learner, rather than a visual learner, you will benefit even more from this multi-sensory process. As for using spaced repetition, aside from looking at your book from time to time, this audio program will allow you to listen to the material over and over again, while driving or exercising, for example, preferably with a day or so between the sessions. What our studies have found to be the most effective sequence is as follows, and remember to apply the sequence to anything you want to master. For the first week, you listen to it every day. After the first week, you listen to it once per week for one to three months, depending upon how committed you are to following the process and how quickly you want results. After the first one to three months, you listen to it once per month for about a year. When combined with the other things we'll have you do, that generally does the trick. But as you will see, you won't need to listen to the entire audio program every time. You'll be able to skip over the beginning parts as you become more proficient. So in this case, you might continue listening to just part four every single day for one to three months, but it only lasts one minute, so it will be fairly easy to do. You may also recall from the book that one of the most powerful habit generators is application, actually applying what you're learning to your real life. That is mostly what we'll be doing in parts two through four. But let's get started now with part one, The Habit Factory. Fix it. Most people are drawn to self-help for the wrong reason. They're trying to fix something. But the sooner you accept yourself for who you are now, the more powerfully you can move forward in creating a life you love now. Next, you aren't broken. Your past doesn't determine your potential. There may be things you can improve on, but no more than anyone else. We're all works in progress. Next, 
nearly all of us have been inadvertently programmed to believe that it's up to others to decide whether or not we're okay. But in truth, only you can determine your value. You must therefore learn to love who you are and where you are now, because now is all that will ever exist. Next, believe it. When it comes to believing, there is no secular power greater than believing in yourself. All things are possible to him who believes. Next, self-love, self-esteem, is, without question, one of the single most important factors in determining your happiness and success in life. Next, reach it. It is human nature to take things for granted. Thus, no matter what you achieve, you must keep reaching if you want to remain fulfilled. If you achieve your goals and stop reaching, your life will soon slip back to a state of discontent. Life isn't about reaching goals. It's about reaching, period. You need to live in the process of mastery if you want to be fulfilled, and you must learn to enjoy this process if you want to be happy. The process of self-mastery can be every bit as rewarding as the results it generates. Next, apply it. Self-improvement is one of the single most important things you can do if you want to live a highly successful and fulfilling life. Most humans go through their lives as victims to their thoughts, actions, habits, and character, rather than the architects and masters of them. When you do reach out for more, no matter how brilliant you or the messages you study might be, if you don't consistently apply them, you won't get the consistent and lasting results you desire. Chances are you won't consistently apply them unless you turn them into habits. Knowledge must therefore be converted into habit, so you will automatically and continuously apply it. If you are not consistently applying knowledge, you are not consistently benefiting from it. Next, change it. Virtually all your feelings, choices, and actions are based on just two things, your thoughts and your habits. Change them, and you change your world. Changing your thoughts will change your course, but changing your habits will change your life, because habits control nearly everything. You must convert what you learn into habits if you want to get consistent, reliable, continued results. Willpower alone isn't enough. It's habit power, not willpower, that brings lasting results. Next, use it. Creating new habits is incredibly difficult, and staying on course is by far the biggest and most challenging part of any journey. This is why Self Help Me was created to support you in the process of converting newfound knowledge into your basic nature, where it will then generate the greatest results. Between Self Help Me and the Permalearn Mastery System, you now have a choice of two powerful ways for ensuring the improvements, mastery, and results you're looking for. Next, systematize it. Without systems, every living organism in fact, the entire universe would ultimately fail. Systems increase your power exponentially. As a result, there is almost nothing you can't accomplish through the consistent use of a proven system. Results are usually in direct proportion to your effort, provided you are using a proven system that properly directs your efforts. Next, master it. If you want guaranteed results from the subject you choose, you must use the proven system that successful leaders are using in that area. Great books and other improvement programs often tell you what systems the leading experts use. Masters all have something in common. In addition to mastering the systems in their area of strength, they have also mastered critical aspects of their nature, including the unique set of thoughts, actions, character traits and habits needed in order to excel in their particular field. 
without exception, the people who get the greatest results aren't the ones who focus on results, but rather those who focus on mastering themselves and the systems behind the results they want. If you consistently apply the same thoughts, actions, and character traits using the same proven systems as the masters in your area of interest so they become a part of your basic nature, you will get the same general results. Next, reroute it. The past does not equal the future. Just because you may not have realized your unlimited potential yet, it doesn't mean you never will. It only means you need to follow a different protocol. The protocol we recommend is that which we are teaching now. Next, simplify it. Simplify whatever you want to learn. Boil it down to its bare essence. Then consistently apply each of these basic insights one at a time, day in and day out, until you not only get the kind of results you're looking for, but more important, until it becomes a part of your basic nature, in which case you'll apply it automatically from then on. If you do nothing but master one major insight from any meaningful book, CD, or program, you may benefit far more from that one new trait than from everything you've ever studied but failed to consistently apply combined. What will you master from this program? Next, support it. Except that without a support community, it is nearly impossible to sustain your efforts, especially through the tougher times, and therefore long enough to generate the habits you need to continue sustaining your efforts. Get support partners, or better yet, permalearn coaching partners. You are far more effective at making significant changes when you have the support of others. Next, release it. Being attached to an outcome creates nothing but pain and suffering. Rarely does it ever improve your results, and it almost always makes things worse. You must therefore create the habit of letting go, once you know you've done your best then turn it over to God. And finally, just do it. Now that you've gotten this far, the next thing you'll need to do, if you haven't already, is go to your favorite book or program, or check out the programs we offer on our website, ipermalearn.org, and figure out what subject you'll tackle first by applying the steps you'll find next in Part 2. Part 2. Lasting Results Simple Steps to Success How to Get the Results You Want and Keep Them As mentioned in the book and in Part 1, one of the most powerful habit generators known is application, actually applying what you're learning to your real life. It's also the single best way on earth for getting results. And if you do it consistently, it's the best way of getting consistent results. But remember the paradox. In order to do it consistently, it must be turned into a habit. However, in order to create the habit, you must do it consistently. So that is mostly what we'll be doing here in Part 2, assisting you in first figuring out what it is you need to do, then in Parts 2, 3, and 4, we'll help you keep doing it until it becomes a habit and you do it automatically. And keep in mind, the following steps are not designed to replace entire books on these subjects, such as understanding who you really are and setting your goals. They are merely included as a way of getting you started and moving forward on the right track now. You can introduce the principles from other books as you go. Finally, you're going to hear a few similarities between messages in Part 2 and those in Part 1, so bear with me. I've done this intentionally to further drive these principles into your life. Remember, spaced repetition works. As you become more familiar with the process and better understand what to do and why, you can begin skipping part one and go straight to part two. Well, let's get started. Many of the following steps can be done in any order, so use your own judgment when deciding which ones to tackle first. This is the general order that I prefer. 
Part 2. Know Thyself. This is the oldest known self-help lesson in recorded history. If you are ever to fully understand what subjects, goals, and activities are best suited for you, you must understand your own basic nature, or the nature of your organization. Since this isn't an exercise in self-denial, you need to know the truth about who you are and what your needs are. Although you can begin your journey on any subject matter without doing this particular step, the better you know yourself, the more effective you will be. If you don't already have one of the many wonderful books available on figuring out who you really are, at least start with the following basic assignments. 1. Do a self-assessment to discover what motivates you and what really matters to you. Is it money? Recognition? Peace of mind? Creative self-expression? Freedom? Power? Romance? Security? What? As you make your list, place the highest priorities and motivators first. This will help you stay focused on the things that matter most and allow you to begin letting go of the ones that don't. Look at your patterns. What choices have you consistently made? Do you stay with a job you love even though you don't make the money you'd like? Or do you stay with a job you hate because the pay is so good? Where you spend your time and money and what you are willing to fight for will say a great deal about what really matters to you. The only way to true happiness is by living a life that is consistent with what matters most to you. 2. To understand your strengths so you can capitalize on them and incorporate them into your activities and goals, you must take a look at your past successes. Throughout your life, what has come the most easily to you? What have you consistently been good at? 3. To further understand your areas of genius, take a poll of those who know you well and ask what they believe are your three greatest areas of strength. 4. Make a list of which aspects of your nature are hard nature, DNA hardwired into you, and which are soft nature, learned behaviors, habits, attitudes, and perceptions, so you know what areas you'll be able to change and which ones you'll want to work around or harness. Refer back to this subject in the book for reminders on which of our traits are typically hard and which are soft. Next, pick your subject. Once again, the best way to master the contents of this program is by applying it to another program or book, seminar, lesson, etc. Assignments. Before going any further, you need to select the next subject you most want to master at this time. It could be something you're doing for your career, for school, for your family, or for your own personal growth and happiness. Use your list of priorities as your guide. 2. Avoid taking on too many subjects at once, or you'll be unable to give any of them the attention they require for mastery. Next, update your compelling goals. You've likely set some goals already and have in fact chosen your current subject matter in accordance with those goals, or the other way around. But goal setting is an ongoing process and must be continuously reevaluated and improved upon. It's also a science in and of itself, and there are countless incredible books on the subject, so we don't want to go into too much detail here. We'll just cover enough to keep you moving forward until goal setting becomes one of your mastery subjects. Once you know who you really are, you need to know where you really want to go, which means you absolutely must have goals, and not just any old goals. Your goals must be compelling and vivid. This is critical because these vivid goals will act as a blueprint for the future and as an announcement to the universe that it's time to get behind your efforts. The more compelling and specific your goals are, the more believable they become. The more believable they are, the more passion you'll develop. The more passion you develop, the more action you'll take, which will make it even more believable. And all this will enroll others to believe in you and your vision, which will cause them to take action as well, which will then more powerfully help bring about your results. 
Assignments. Write your dream destiny. This can be something general for yourself, your family, or your organization. Or it can be something specific, like losing 40 pounds in a year. 2. At the very least, make sure this goal incorporates the subject matter you've chosen to master. 3. Once you have the dream written out, expand on it, going into greater and greater detail, spelling out every aspect of what it will look like, how you'll get there, and when. It sounds a little like writing out a business plan, doesn't it? If possible, write a three- to five-year version of your goals and what they will look like at that point in time. Then, write a one-year version. Where do you need to be in a year from now in order to be where you'd love to be in three to five years? Then write a similar six, three, and one-month version. And then a one-week version. And finally, list what you need to do today to bring about the one-week version, which, if continued, will bring about the one-month version, and so on. And once again, make sure these goals include mastering the subject you're working on now. Next, immerse yourself. To get the quickest, most powerful results possible, we suggest you immerse yourself in your subject matter. Although you can take as much time as you like to master the specific principles and character traits you want, the less immersed you are, the longer it will be before you see the results you're looking for. If you allow it to take too long, you may find yourself unable to sustain your passion and commitment, in which case the changes you're hoping for are unlikely to ever come about. We recommend that once you decide to make a change, you dive right in, head first, and saturate your life in the subject matter until you're well on your way to mastery. Assignments. Accept that it will take between one and three months for you to see habits even beginning to form around the improvements you want. It may also take about the same length of time to see measurable results. The exact length of time required will depend on a myriad of variables, such as how immersed you are, how passionate and committed you are, the difficulty of changes you're attempting, the level of support you have from others, what kind of system you use. This doesn't mean you won't see changes or results beforehand, but it's psychologically in your best interest to make a longer-term commitment and exercise patience. Assignment 2. Apply as many of the suggestions offered in Self Help Me and Permalearn as possible and do so as often as you can, even several times per day where feasible. Remember, spaced repetition is one of the single most powerful tools known for creating mastery. 3. Surround yourself with others who share your commitment and, if possible, pursue it together daily. 4. Teach what you are learning to others every chance you get. We'll cover more on both of these subjects later. 5. Apply what you're learning to your real life every chance you get, and more on this as well. Next, build support communities. As we've taught throughout this program, you must have the support of others if you want to make and sustain significant changes in your life. Assignments. Go through your address book and make a list of all the people in your life who you believe would be willing to allow you to share your goals and updates with them once per week, or at the very least once per month. This is your support community. 2. Make a shorter list of those who, in addition to working with you on your goals and helping you stay inspired, would allow you to share with them every week a summary of the main things you're learning through this program and through the other programs you're mastering. They may even do the same with you in reverse as well as encourage you through some of your tougher times. This is your support team. 3. Make an even shorter list of those who are willing to do everything your support team does, plus be available on a daily basis if needed. These are your support partners. And if you or they are interested in becoming a trained Permalearn coaching partner, Instead of just a support partner, we can help each of you learn how to brilliantly support one another on every level you can imagine. 
The added support a trained coaching partner gives and gets ranges from gently holding one another accountable and recognizing each other's limiting patterns, excuses, and exceptions to encouraging, inspiring, and helping each other live in more positive, powerful, and productive states. This includes helping each other move through your more challenging and darker days, celebrating your victories, and seeing each other in your brightest light at all times. When you're ready to take this step, you'll find that coaching partners are the most important people in your life when it comes to creating habits and reaching your goals. For more on this, just go to ipermalearn.org. Next, discipline yourself. Self-discipline, perseverance, persistence, call it what you like. It has been recognized by many as the single most important factor behind achievement and success. Technically, habits are even more important than self-discipline because habits are automatic and thus far more reliable. But you still want and need all the self-discipline you can muster, which you will develop by doing the following. Assignments. Once you've chosen your subject matter and your goals are in place, you'll begin working toward them each and every day. Regardless of the outcome of that day's efforts, you'll recommit again the next day, then the next and the next. By pressing forward every day and not allowing inevitable setbacks to discourage you, you will ultimately develop greater self-discipline. Every time you force yourself to do something that hasn't yet become a habit, your discipline grows. And paradoxically, as you continue doing it, eventually it becomes a habit, at which point you no longer need self-discipline to do it. The steps we suggest in this program will keep you going until habits form, so follow them as closely as possible. 2. Reach beyond your grasp. Step outside of your comfort zone in each area you're taking on today. Do a little more than you think you can. Do something you're a little afraid to do today. Next, generate passion. The greater your passion, the greater your power. Passion propels you. It helps you through the difficult stages of habit formation. So you must do all you can to generate and feed your passion. Assignments. One. One of the best ways to feed your passion is by creating a cost and payoffs list. So make a list of what it will cost you if you don't accomplish your goals, the regrets you'll have, and then another of what the payoffs will be if you do, and continue adding to these lists often. Two. Once you feel a passionate commitment to your goals, begin sharing them with others. But not just anyone. Only share them with those who are most likely to support you in bringing this about. This is where your support community will come in very handy, especially your support or coaching partners. If you're wondering how you will bring about your passionate goals this time, when you may never have succeeded before, it's because this time you'll be incorporating the many new support tools and programs we recommend that you most likely didn't have in place before, such as a powerful support community. Next, inspire yourself. Just as homeostasis responds to positive feedback, so does your entire being. Studies have shown that those who are most inspired are almost always most powerful and joyous. Assignment. Create and use as many ways as possible to inspire yourself each and every day. Go to inspirational and motivational seminars. Listen to inspirational music or create tracks of your own, ones that inspire you in the morning, during the day, and as you fall asleep at night. Have daily meetings with your support partners or others who want to be inspired. We have a program called The Wake Up Call. Check it out on our website. Watch inspirational movies. Read inspirational books, quotes, and phrases. Listen to inspirational CDs. Repeatedly view inspirational images. Review your costs and payoffs list. We offer a growing selection on our website for just inspiration, so you may want to check that out too. 
Master the principles we covered in the book under Plato's platitude. We'll also touch on them here. It's one thing to know what these principles are, but something entirely different to live them. Once you know what it is you want to do and where you want to go, beginning with the subject you've chosen to master first, it's time to discover and master the traits and systems of the masters in your field of interest. Assignments 1. Make a list of the top three to five individuals in your area of interest, the masters, the best of the best. If, for instance, you want to be a famous gourmet chef, you might include names like Wolfgang Puck and Emeril. You can find these superstars through the news media, the internet, bookstores, trade associations, and by word of mouth. 2. Once you have your list, do some research and learn what you can about their character. You'll want to remove the names of those who, in spite of their apparent success, are known to be unhappy, unfulfilled, unreliable, unsober, and so on. For instance, you obviously won't want to emulate someone who seems to have a great deal of talent and success, but very poor character. Our goal is to help you succeed even if you don't have excessive amounts of talent, because talent is subjective and often a part of our hard nature, which is something we have little control over. Statistically, there are more successful people who have modest talent but great character than there are talented people who have poor character. And very few of those with poor character are happy and fulfilled, no matter how successful they become. So it's rather difficult to define them as being truly successful. Once you have your master list of masters, make a list of the traits and habits they have in common in each of the following areas. The thoughts they appear to have. Read their quotes, books, and public statements. Learn about their philosophies and beliefs if you can. The words they use. Do the same as we just mentioned. The actions they take. Read their bios, watch their activities, and listen to what they have to say about these activities. Their character. Observe their character traits. Try finding out what their virtues are, such as charity, self-discipline, and integrity. On a more ambitious level, once you learn about each of their strengths, you can combine the best of each to form a model of the ultimate master in your area of interest. Next, master their systems. Systems increase your power exponentially. You can accomplish almost anything through the consistent use of a proven system. In addition to converting the thoughts, words, actions, and character traits we've just covered into habits, you'll also want to research and then master the system they use to generate their success. And you'll want to stick with that system for as long as they tell you to, without improvising or changing it. You can, at times, make changes to a system after you've mastered and proven yourself, but use great caution when doing so, for as long as you add one thing, you may lose another. Assignments as you emulate the masters in your area of interest and their systems, you'll also create systems around your other thoughts and activities. So devise more effective ways to do everything, from getting dressed to spending quality time with your family. And you don't need to invent it all from scratch. Proven systems already exist for nearly everything, including those for families. Just watch a busy mom with a happy, high-functioning family. Two. Remember to follow the system your leaders follow each and every day. Don't make excuses or allow exceptions in regard to executing each step, for exceptions are what makes the difference between those who succeed and those who don't. Next, add coaches and mentors to your community. In addition to an untrained support community, we all need, from time to time, someone with greater skills and insights. We need coaches and mentors who can be entirely objective and who have such a grasp of either our specific area of interest or of human nature that they can, and in a relatively short period of time, help us figure out who we are, where we need to be going, and the best way of getting there. An effective coach will also be able to come along on the journey and see you safely to the other side.
a coaching partner can take you part way there. But unless that coaching partner has been fully trained as an empowerment or life coach, you may still want an expert for the more challenging goals or aspects of your life. Assignment Find at least one excellent mentor in your specific area of interest and one professional coach. You don't need to engage them immediately, but make sure you at least know who you want and what their availability is. Some of us have a long waiting list, taking three months or longer before an opening occurs. So you may want to, at least, have your first consultation and get on their calendar. We're happy to show you how to tell a good coach from a not-so-good one, as well as to offer recommendations and referrals. Just go to our website, ipermalearn.org. Next, pay it forward. One of the most powerful ways known for mastering something is to teach it to others. It's also one of the best ways of surrounding yourself with people who are on the same page as you. Assignment. In addition to teaching what you learn to your support community, you'll also look for ways of teaching those who are not in your support community. This can include business prospects, neighbors, even complete strangers, such as those you sit next to on a plane or bus. Next, get results. Results are important, so please do the following. Assignment. Do all you can to emulate those who are getting the best results. Then let go. Let nature take its course. If, while taking every step suggested, you still don't start seeing measurable results in one to three months, go back and figure out which of these steps, traits, or systems you're probably still missing or not following. And if you still can't find your solution, go to an expert on the subject or hire a coach. You're worth it. Next, hang in there. Homeostasis doesn't like change. It wants to keep things the same. Remembering this will help ease the pain when your homeostasis fights to keep you from growing or changing. Assignment. Whenever you feel homeostasis kicking in and trying to pull you backward, accept it as a natural response. Don't get discouraged. Don't even feel bad. Just know it's normal. Then go out and celebrate the gains you have made. Homeostasis responds to positive feedback, so every time you celebrate your gains, your homeostasis quiets down and the change begins to stick. Assignment. Whenever you feel your homeostasis kicking in and trying to pull you backward, accept it as a natural response. Don't get discouraged. Don't even feel bad. Just know it is normal. Then go out and celebrate the gains you have made. Homeostasis responds to positive feedback, so every time you celebrate your gains, your homeostasis quiets down and the change begins to stick, which allows you to begin moving forward again. Next, love yourself. It's great to love your life, but learning to love yourself is the greatest feeling of all. Assignment. Remind yourself every day, throughout the day, that you're okay. Not broken, not bad. Imperfect, yes, but that's okay, because either we're all imperfect, and therefore okay, or we're all miracles, and therefore okay. Refuse to look beyond yourself for permission to be or feel okay. It isn't up to anyone but you to place a value on who you are. Next, want what you have. The ultimate quest might naturally involve learning to love who, what, and where you are now, because now is all there will ever be. Chances are you'll never master this area of your life because it's against human nature to be entirely content. However, you can continue to grow in that general direction and at least get as close as possible. Assignments. Create the habit of consistently looking at the wonders in your life and being grateful for them. 2. Don't compare. If you must compare your life to others, always compare it to those who have less. Better still, after comparing to those with less, go contribute to them and you'll feel even better. Next, harness your nature. 
once you've gotten to know yourself better and have an idea of what your hard nature is, you'll want to find ways of working around it or harnessing it. Assignments First, learn about your soft nature and figure out which habits you need to replace or create to get the results you want. Habits and soft nature are pretty much the same thing. If you get stuck or confused, don't worry. You'll gain a better understanding of what to work on as you go. 2. Create a list of ways to use your hard nature to alter your soft nature and for helping you apply the lessons in the subject matter you've chosen. An example would be to use an inborn stubborn streak, excessive energy, or being naturally easygoing as tools to help you make or keep new commitments and habits. Build your career or master a new system. Harnessing your hard nature or getting around it may seem like abstract concepts at first, but as you gain greater understanding of what your hard nature is, harnessing or avoiding it in the areas of your goals will eventually become common sense. Next, keep it simple. Easy does it. Less is more. By now you know that most authors and program developers have a lot to say, and I'm no exception. The challenge with this is that humans can only learn, much less master, so much at a time. To increase your odds of mastering the subject you've chosen, you must boil it down to its simplest, most essential elements. Authors can't always do this for you because they need to make sure you fully understand their message. And since they don't always know when each individual is going to get it, they need to write to the least common denominator which causes them to elaborate, like I'm doing now. Sorry. But once you do understand, you must reduce the volume of information to a fraction of its original content. If you want to maximize results, you must reduce an entire book to a few paragraphs or pages of straightforward statements that are easy to understand, remember, and execute. We've done that here for you with this super simple audio support system especially as we move into parts three and four. Assignments. Take the material you're studying, including the contents of this program, and create a summary of each chapter, message, lesson, or step. If a summary already exists, summarize the summary. In fact, you'll want to keep distilling each summary until you really do have the entire book down to a few simple sentences or pages. I call them summary statements. 2. Although this isn't a required step, you may want to habitize your summary statements. Habitizing is fun. Just pretend you own an advertising agency, and it's your job to get the customer thinking and talking about your summary statements, day and night. It's also your job to make that customer want to master the subject so badly that he'll do almost anything to accomplish it. The customer, of course, is you. Or, if you're making changes in your organization, it's your staff or team. Develop a habit campaign. It's like an ad campaign, based on the summary statements from the book or program you're learning that will best promote the core messages you want to master. Think of slogans, images, and messages you can use to help drive home the lessons in each of your summary statements. How can you turn a summary statement into a catchy, memorable phrase, for instance? Examples. Things go better with God. Just do it. What's great about this? I have no uses for excuses. Or, let it go, let it go, let it go. Decide which media you'll use to reach and continue reaching the customer, yourself and your teams. Use miniature billboards, vision boards, and clever little signs and photo images you print out on your computer and mount everywhere you look. Make sure you move them on a weekly basis, otherwise your reticular activating system will cause you to stop being able to see them. Saturate your life with them, just as you would if you were launching a new product or brand. You might even put the images to music or to a CD of your favorite messages like this super condensed version of the book we're doing now. You can go to our website for more on this. The more of our senses we involve in learning anything, the more likely we are to master it. The same goes for habit formation. 
This is where live events and television or online computer programming and webinars have a real edge because they involve sight, sound, and motion. The more fully saturated your life is with anything you want to master, the more likely you are to master it, and the more quickly. So just keep thinking of and trying out ways to keep it up front and real. Next, HypnoVision. One of the many tools you can use to create your own programming is something I call HypnoVision. This takes place at the time when your mind is most susceptible and receptive to changes in thought and habit during the alpha and theta stages of sleep and wakefulness. You must use every tool at your disposal to create habits, and one of them involves exposing yourself to the thoughts you want to master during your alpha and theta states. That would be during relaxed meditative states, daydream states, and the state you're in as you drift off to sleep or begin to awaken. Assignment. Take the habitizements you've created and other items that represent what you want in your life, or more specifically, that represent the area you wish to master through books or programs you're studying, and make an effort to focus your attention on them as you fall asleep at night and awaken in the morning. Better still, imagine them being real and in your life now. I highly recommend that you create or find a CD of insights that are consistent with the lessons you want to master and listen to them as you fall asleep and awaken each day. If you have a CD alarm clock that allows you to wake up to your chosen CD already playing, better still. Next is the God Factor. On a deeper, more spiritual level, we can't help but know that paying it forward is the right thing to do. Just as remembering to give thanks and credit to whomever you refer to as your higher source is also a great idea. Assignments. As often as possible, stop and give thanks to God or whomever you call your higher source. 2. Never hesitate to turn things over to your higher source when you feel you've reached the end of your rope or just need a little extra support. Next, be accepting. When things seem too difficult, out of control, or just plain wrong, you need to stop thinking that they aren't supposed to be the way they are and begin asking yourself, how can I respond in a more positive and productive way, regardless of whether they seem to be the way we want them or not? Assignment. When you find yourself judging things as being wrong or unacceptable, consider the possibility that things are exactly the way they're supposed to be, and then quickly figure out the lesson you're supposed to learn. Then ask yourself what is great about it, and get started finding a solution you prefer. Next, sing in the rain. Since it's human nature to want things to be fast, fun, and easy, look for ways to make your tasks and chores as fast, fun, and easy as possible. Assignment. No matter what challenges you're faced with, refuse to write dark stories, be a victim, or get upset. Instead, commit to making the process as rewarding and fulfilling as possible to increase the odds that you'll not only stick it out and do a great job, but that you'll also enjoy the journey. As my grandfather once taught me, show a lazy man a hard job and he'll show you an easy way to do it. Next, chill out. It doesn't serve you to be frightened or overwhelmed, and it never will. There are many ways of staving off overwhelm, but the most powerful way is also the best way of all for fighting fear. And here it is, your assignment. Stay in the moment. Live your life in short, five-minute increments when possible. Both overwhelm and fear are usually a result of focusing on a future that doesn't yet exist. It's okay to plan for the future and to take steps toward making it a positive one. But your future is decided in the present, just as your peace and happiness are. Next, use progressive repetition. If you want to increase the number of subjects you can learn and master at the same time, instead of waiting until you have fully mastered one before moving on to the next, do the following. Assignment. Start with one specific trade or subject you wish to master, and apply all the steps recommended in this material. 
anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks later, add another trait or subject you want to master to the first one you're working on and apply all the steps in this material to the new trait as well. You can continue adding new traits every few days or weeks until you reach a point where you're no longer able to give each trait enough time and attention to sustain the steps in this program. As explained in the book, this is much like learning the alphabet by adding one new letter every day. Next, let go and enjoy the journey. What better way to end this section than by reminding you that life is short, life is precious, and it's perfectly okay to be happy along the way. Assignment. Enjoy your path to growth and mastery, for the path is really all there is. If you need further assistance on building your communities, finding suggested books or CDs, references, services, and other support tools, we encourage you to visit ipermalearn.org. Okay. Now that you've got the general idea as to what to do, we want to make sure you actually do it and keep doing it. Part 3 is very simple and basic, and as mentioned earlier, you'll listen to this part every single day. Not just every day for a week, but every day right up until you're absolutely certain that you'll follow these basic steps with little more than the one minute reminder in Part 4. The following will list more activities than you can master or even do in the beginning, so you'll want to use the progressive repetition we spoke about to gradually work them in. If you've forgotten, progressive repetition means that you'll start with the first item, such as know thyself, and work on it every day until you begin to feel comfortable with it. In some cases, it may take no more than a day or two before you're ready to add the next item, such as picking your subject or updating your goals. Once you've accomplished that, you'll then add the next item and so on, until you're applying each step to your life regularly and automatically, all at the same time. As you become more familiar with this process and better understand what to do and why, you can stop listening to parts one and two and go straight to part three. So let's start with that now. First, know thyself. Today, create a list of your priorities in order of importance, the things in life that matter most to you if you haven't done so already, and review the list to make sure you stay focused on what matters most throughout the day. Then do the same thing with your list of strengths so you remember to make use of them as often as possible today. Next, pick your subject. Today, using your list of priorities, Pick the next subject you want to learn or master most if you haven't yet done so, such as your health and fitness, advancing your career, wealth and prosperity, parenting, etc., and visualize yourself mastering it. Next, update your compelling goals. Today, review and update your goals, factoring in the subject you wish to master. You'll want to update your longer range goals every few months and your daily goals each day. As you master this overall process, your goals will change, so keep referring back to them. Next, immerse yourself. Today, look for ways to surround yourself with the principles you're trying to master. Find ways to talk about them, apply them, teach them, think about them, post them on your walls, anything you can come up with that will keep them alive and in your life. Next, build your support community. Today, add people to your support community. Make sure you already have at least one support partner or Permalearn coaching partner if you haven't yet done so. Next, contact your support community. Today, contact your support or coaching partner and possibly others in your support community to discuss your goals and activities for the day and encourage one another. You will also discuss your goals and activities from the day before to hold each other accountable and help identify excuses and exceptions being made. You will also want to do something similar to this with your support or Permalearn coaching team once per week if possible. Next, 
Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Today, refuse to make or allow excuses or exceptions. Follow your goals and commitments to the letter. Remember, it isn't your commitments that define your character or determine your destiny. It is the exceptions you make to following through on them. Next, discipline yourself. Today, any time you find yourself even thinking about making an exception or not following through on your goals and commitments, remind yourself that every time you resist a negative impulse, you get one notch better at resisting negative impulses. Persistence takes practice. Next, reach. Today, reach beyond your grasp. Step beyond your comfort zone in each area you're taking on today. Do a little more than you think you can. Do something you're a little afraid to do today. Next, inspire yourself. Today, look for ways to inspire yourself. Anything you can think of that will remind you of why you've chosen the challenging path you're on. Whether you do it with movies, CDs, books, a coaching partner, by reviewing your costs and payoffs list, or through positive self-talk. Find a way to stay inspired and passionate about your goals for as long as possible each day until your habits form and take over. Next, identify the leaders. Today, find out who the leaders are in your chosen subject area and learn more about them if you haven't yet done so. This is generally best accomplished via word of mouth or through the internet. Next, master their traits. Today, find out which thoughts, actions, and character traits these leaders have in common if you haven't yet done so. Then apply some aspect of each trait to your life and objectives today. Next, master their systems. Today, find out which systems these leaders use if you haven't yet done so. Then follow the same protocol they follow and recommend. If, for instance, they make a certain number of phone calls each day, make sure you do so as well. Next, add coaches and mentors to your community. Today, Add to your list of people who can coach or mentor you in the subject area you've chosen. Then make an effort to contact and spend time with one of them. Next, pay it forward. Today, teach at least one person outside of your support community at least one of the things you are trying to master. Next, hang in there. Today, any time you feel resistance, remind yourself that our nature doesn't like change. Homeostasis fights it until the change has been accepted by your basal ganglia. Until then, don't get discouraged. Just remind yourself that it's a normal part of the process. Next, love yourself. Today, remind yourself throughout the day that you are okay. Not broken, imperfect, yes, but that's okay too. Spend the day looking for proof that you have great value. Next, want what you have. Today, spend the day looking at the wonders in your life and being grateful. Refuse to compare yourself or your life to anyone else. Next, harness your nature. Today, make a list of the parts of your nature you were born with, if you haven't done so already. Then look for ways to harness that hard nature and use it to help you get what you want. Next, Keep it simple. Today, reduce the material, traits, or systems you're learning or trying to master to just a few simple lines, as we do in part four of this program. If possible, make it something catchy and easy to remember. Next, hypnovision. Today, expose yourself to this audio program or other material you're trying to learn or master just as you're falling asleep or waking up. Next, the God Factor. Today, as often as possible, stop and give thanks to God or your higher source for the abundance in your life and turn over the things that are out of your control as well. Next, be accepting. Today, learn as much as possible from the things that don't go your way. Then, 
Look for what's great about them. Next, chill out. Today, stay in the moment as often as you can. Focus on what is here and now if you want to avoid fear and live in a peaceful state. And finally, let go and enjoy the journey. Today, remind yourself throughout the day that everything always works out. Then take in a deep breath, smile, and let go. And this last section is nothing more than a word cue, reminding you of the steps you'll want to incorporate into your life each day. It takes only a few moments to listen to, so I filled out the rest of this soundtrack with only part four, repeating itself again and again. This will help you learn it even faster on the days when you have the time to just let it keep repeating. And remember, as you become more familiar with this material, you'll get to a point where you'll only listen to it once per month or so, just to make sure the neuronal connections remain intact. So here's the list for part four. Know thyself. Pick your subject. Update your compelling goals. Immerse yourself. Build your support community. Contact your support community. Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Discipline yourself. Reach. Inspire yourself. Identify your leaders. Master their traits. Master their systems. Add coaches and mentors to your community. Pay it forward. Hang in there. Love yourself. Want what you have. Harness your nature. Keep it simple. Use hypnovision. Remember the God factor. Be accepting. Chill out. Let go and enjoy the journey. Go to ipermalearn.org for additional support. Part 4 will now repeat. Know thyself. Pick your subject. Update your compelling goals. Immerse yourself. Build your support community. Contact your support community. Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Discipline yourself. Reach. Inspire yourself. Identify your leaders. Master their traits. Master their systems. Add coaches and mentors to your community. Pay it forward. Hang in there. Love yourself. Want what you have. Harness your nature. Keep it simple. Use hypnovision. Remember the God factor. Be accepting. Chill out. Let go and enjoy the journey. Go to ipermalearn.org for additional support. Part 4 will now repeat. Know thyself. Pick your subject. Update your compelling goals. Immerse yourself. Build your support community. Contact your support community. Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Discipline yourself. Reach. Inspire yourself. Identify your leaders. 
master their traits, master their systems, add coaches and mentors to your community, pay it forward, hang in there, love yourself, want what you have, harness your nature, keep it simple, use hypnovision, Remember the God factor. Be accepting. Chill out. Let go and enjoy the journey. Go to ipermalearn.org for additional support. Part 4 will now repeat. Know thyself. Pick your subject. Update your compelling goals. Immerse yourself. Build your support community. Contact your support community. Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Discipline yourself. Reach. Inspire yourself. Identify your leaders. Master their traits. Master their systems. Add coaches and mentors to your community. Pay it forward. Hang in there. Love yourself. Want what you have. Harness your nature. Keep it simple. Use hypnovision. Remember the God factor. Be accepting. Chill out. Let go and enjoy the journey. Go to ipermalearn.org for additional support. Part 4 will now repeat. Know thyself. Pick your subject. Update your compelling goals. Immerse yourself. Build your support community. Contact your support community. Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Discipline yourself. Reach. Inspire yourself. Identify your leaders. Master their traits. Master their systems. Add coaches and mentors to your community. Pay it forward. Hang in there. Love yourself. Want what you have. Harness your nature. Keep it simple. Use hypnovision. Remember the God factor. Be accepting. Chill out. Let go and enjoy the journey. Go to ipermalearn.org for additional support. Part 4 will now repeat. Know thyself. Pick your subject. Update your compelling goals. Immerse yourself. Build your support community. Contact your support community. Avoid making excuses or exceptions. Discipline yourself. Reach. Inspire yourself. Identify your leaders. Master their traits. Master their systems. Add coaches and mentors to your community. Pay it forward. Hang in there. Love yourself. Want what you have. 
Harness your nature. Keep it simple. Use hypnovision. Remember the God factor. Be accepting. Chill out. Let go and enjoy the journey. Go to ipermalearn.org for additional support. Part 4 will now repeat.